I'm going to talk about feed prices and rations for uh, 2014. This happens every year over the past my lifetime where feed prices always follow the corn price. No matter if it's hay price, silage prices, um, co-product prices, the corn price seems to always set what our feed prices are going to be in the industry. Obviously when prices went up, feed prices went up, and when corn prices went down, we see what happened. You know, I, I provided a, a something like this back in 2012 of what, of what our prices were back then. And as you can see, corn back then was $6.58, or if I remember right, $235 a ton, and wheat mids were $250. Barley malt sprouts were $260, and distiller's grains were $255. Um, that was really high prices, and how quick we forget that in 2013 they went down to $4 a bushel, which is around $150 a ton. And look at the wheat mids price, $145, barley malt sprouts at $160, and dried distiller's grains at $165 really close to the same price as what corn is. Hay obviously has less energy in it, so it's priced lower. And corn silage has a higher moisture content, so consequently it's priced lower per ton on an as-fed basis. If you come to 2014, that's this year, um, I handed in our room uh, a co-products price list, and I don't know if in the other rooms they might have re had a selected co-products in North Dakota, but it's a price list that's been handed out. Off of that, I've, I've picked up the corn price of the ethanol plants in North Dakota, and you can see that corn is priced around 268 yesterday. Not today, prices change, but 268, which is somewhere around $95 a ton. So let's look at the wheat mid price, $92 a ton. Barley mouth sprouts still have that premium of 110, and the dried distiller's grains were anywhere from 90 to 120, but they're at $100 a ton at the at the plants in North Dakota. Corn silage is priced eight to ten times the value of corn, or a third the price of alfalfa hay. So you can see where the prices are. And grass hay with corn at $95 a ton is probably around $65 a ton. We'll have to see where things turn out this year when it comes to availability of all these feeds that we have for feeding cattle. Um, yeah. Oh, must be hit. Well, anyway, on this particular slide, this, this uh, slide isn't here. I'm sorry, but there's a co-product list in North Dakota that I handed out, and I was going to show you what those are, and it happens to not be here. So, well, whatever the case is. Um, I did want to point on daily nutrient feed costs when it comes to feeding the calf. Let's just take an example. we got a 700-pound steer eating 3% of body weight. Well, that math turns out to be about 21 pounds of feed per day of what the cow, calf would eat, and that's, you know, air-dry feed. Dry matter of that would be around 17.8 pounds of dry matter intake. Well, if we want the calf to gain, he's going to require around a 57 megacal ration and or a 14 pounds of TDN, if you think in the TDN world, and around a 13% crude protein ration. Now, my point here is that if we look at the feed part of the feed, energy is what keeps us hearts pumping every day. Protein builds muscle and helps digestion. Um, the biggest cost in keeping that animal around is going to be the TDN or the energy cost at 14, point, 14 pounds a day, and the corn price for energy is 5 cents a pound. So that's 70 cents a day we spend in just in keeping that animal going. If we just consider the protein side of it, Cattle consume around 2.3 pounds of protein a day, and protein costs at 18 cents. So consequently, it's going to cost about 41 cents in protein costs a day. If we added those two up, we'd say it's $1.20, but that's not what the feed costs are for feeding a calf right now. That's because when you buy energy, you also buy protein in the feed, too. When you buy wheat mids, it's 18% protein. When you buy corn, it's 9% protein. When you buy alfalfa hay, it's 23%. Well, maybe not that high. It could be only 12% protein. But you get the point. So in some of these, in like a corn ration, um, if you follow the math down below, they need 2.3 pounds of protein a day, but the corn is supplying 1.74 pounds a day. So we need to provide an extra six-tenths of a pound of protein. So if you buy two pounds of a... 50% uh, protein supplement that a commercial manufacturer would make, or if you provide three pounds of distiller's grains to the ration, that would be how you get the extra protein in. And if you only supply that 
six tenths of a pound and the protein costs 18 cents, we're only really spending 10 cents a day on additional protein supplementation. So my point is, and when, whenever I talk to people, once in a while they get hung up on protein costs. When in reality, we need to focus on energy costs because that's what drives the cost of feeding cattle. Protein has a cost, but it's not as big as energy cost. And then once in a while, we have the discussion of water. We always need water for our cattle, but we never really put a price on what water's worth. And uh, I think if you look at some of those, if you just do rural water costs, you might only spend two cents a day in water costs. So as a good nutrition perspective, energy costs a lot. Protein needs to be supplemented, and water is actually pretty cheap. Now, I did do some values here on, on doing the math on cost per pound of nutrient, and we've got four different feeds here. One is canola meal, wheat mids, corn grain, and distiller's grains, or dried distiller's grains. Crude protein of canola meal is 38%. Um, the energy value on an as-fed basis is 62%. The cost per ton right now is 219. Cost per pound is a, is 10 cents or 11 cents. Cost per pound of energy though is 20, of protein is 28 cents. And cost per pound of TDN is going to be 18 cents. So what you do in order to get the cost per pound of TDN is take the cost per pound that 0 0.10 divided by the crude protein of 38.7 and then times by 100, and you end up with 0 .175, 0 0.28. Now, if you do for cost per pound of TDN, you take the, the cost per pound, which would be 0 0.109, and divide that by 0 0.621, and that would end up with your cost per pound of TDN. Um, so if we look here, we'll see that on our protein sources, distiller's grains is our cheapest protein source out there. Well, let's look at the energy cost of our feeds. Uh, looking down through that list, wheat mids, corn grain, and distiller's grains are all about the same price per pound of energy. So corn at 95 bucks a ton on your own farm is a pretty cheap source of energy. If you need some extra protein in the ration, um, if you buy distiller's grains for the energy, you're getting a lot of protein for free. So that's where you can see distiller's grains fits in these rations pretty easy. Wheat mids work as well, too, and the real issue comes into is freight costs. If it costs too much to haul them home, $20 a ton or $5 a ton, that all ends up in the final discussion. Um, there's some unique feed options in North Dakota this year. There's uh, some places there's a lot of high vomitoxin or DON uh, wheat and barley. Uh, I've talked to some places, and I've asked them if they have any... Vom in their wheat? No, they don't have any. Talk to other places, my gosh, we're getting it sent back, we can't even sell it, it's so high. So even though the FDA says that in the final ration should be no more than five parts per million, uh, we've done research here at the Carrington RE Center 10, 15 years ago where we fed high vomitoxin barley to cattle. This research was also done at Crookston, Minnesota. And if I remember right, we can get up, the, I think the barley was around 20 parts or 30 parts per million vomitoxin. The final ration was about 15 parts per of vomitoxin. And whether we fed it to backgrounding calves, finishing calves, pregnant cows, lactating cows, or replacement heifers, uh, we didn't see any problems. No issues. Don't feed it to pigs, but it didn't appear to be any problems to the beef cattle. So if you find some cheap wheat, um, um, consider it might be a feedable source. There's also some sprouted grains in certain areas, so take advantage of those at a discounted price if you can get. Be careful of the, of the alfalfa hay that you might find out there. We had substantial early June rain, so if you cut your hay early like you wanted to to get high-quality hay and it rained three inches on top of it, do a test on it to find out just how much energy has been washed out of the feed. It might test fairly high in protein, but the sugars have been washed out, so consequently you're going to have to buy some energy, like corn or any of these other things, to boost up the ration. Still too early to tell about our high moisture corn situation. Um, our cold, fro our frosts and our warm days, um, it's still drying, so nobody's really looked at combining corn, but boy, it sure would be an opportunity if we all of a sudden turned to real cold weather and now they've got to do something with this high moisture corn. It might be a real feedable thing. As I was calling for co-product prices yesterday, it became really apparent to me the problems our co-product suppliers in North Dakota are having in getting trains to get their products out of the state. You know, we used to talk about oil and, and elevators getting their feeds out, but when it comes to the co-products, um, there's a lot of availability now this year, when in previous years that wasn't the case. So you might be able to find some product that uh, might be priced, well, competitively, obviously, compared to corn, but 
maybe because of the ability to ship it out may be a problem too. I'm going to switch gears a little bit and just talk about differences between animals. We do a project uh, every year. It's going to be happening this year on Saturday. It's called the Dakota Feeder Calf Show. It's going to be a 16th year where producers can sign cattle to this show, and the calves in groups of three or four are then exhibited that day in pens, and then at that point they're shipped over here to Carrington to be fed. They're fed out to finish, and they're on research projects here, but I, I do sort up the data at the end for the producers that consign the cattle, and I think this is kind of insightful as you look at these numbers. The top five pens of calverage, that means the top five average, the top profitable, five top profitable pens, uh, they averaged 3.3 pounds a day, average daily gain, and their feedlot average, average daily gain was 3.85. Last year, that's why, you know, I don't remember this, Tim, because we made phenomenal dollars on feeding cattle last year. I mean, this is so wrong. Well, it's so right. Um, Love to see it again. Maybe in my lifetime we'll see it again sometime, but this is just amazing. When you see numbers like $441 a head feeding profit, that's really because we priced them really low in October of the previous year. And that's what they were selling at, so, you know, there's a real run-up. Okay, let's look at the bottom pen of calves, the average. They gained 2.93, which isn't a bad average daily gain when they're on, finishing, on a finishing ration. The feedlot average daily gain was 3.41, and the feeding that should be profit per head was 292, not a loss, but a profit. There's a typo there. And I see I've got a typo down below there too. Sorry about that. Um, the average of all pens was 3.25 with a feedlot average daily gain of 3.62. And what I'm getting at here is every year there appears to be a $150 spread between the top pen of calves and the bottom pen of calves in profitability. The average be the, the difference between the average and the high was $75. The difference between the average and the low was $75. Whether we're making 400 bucks a head or only making 25 bucks a head or losing 100 bucks a head, it seems that spread always continues showing up. So when you're looking at buying calves, you see where some calves are priced a lot higher than others. There's some history there that knows how well these calves perform. And that's probably why they're bidding, because there's huge differences out here in the cattle. I would like to talk a little bit about weight gain in cattle. It's affected by both the animal and by the feed. Of course, as the animal gets uh, older, its rate of gain, if it's been small, well, put it this way, small animals don't usually gain as fast as what bigger animals are, just because of their ability to intake feed. If they've been green, they're going to go ahead and uh, grow well. If they're fleshy, they may not grow as well. If they're stunted, they just don't grow. Sickness, if they've had previous sickness and lungs, you're going to find out that they just don't marble or they take more days on feed. Implants can improve uh, average daily gain. If they're uh, exposed to really cold weather, snow, and no bedding, then you can end up having poor performance. Mud is a killer when it comes to performance in cattle. Even three, four inches of mud can reduce the, the uh, rate of gain in calves by three, four, or feed efficiency by five, six percent. Now the feed, that's what we're usually talking about here today is the energy density of the feed. Grain is more dense than hay, obviously. It's also more expensive than hay. If we want calves to gain three and a half pounds a day, the ration's mostly going to be grain. If we want it to gain a pound a day, it's mostly going to be hay because we just don't limit feed cattle that much grain. Feed additives like rumensin and Bovatec will help improve feed conversion so, and control coccidiosis. So if you have the opportunity, you can increase your feed efficiency by 5% by adding those in. Mixing wagons always appear to go ahead and improve... Uh, um, the the ability for the performance of calves eating feed. We've done products projects here at the center where we've where we fed cattle separately or together in a mixed wagon, and you'll see an increase of five six percent by mixing feeds and delivering to a feed bunk rather than feeding grain and then feeding hay. And of course, waste and feed loss are huge issues. So, by all means, please uh, even though feed's cheap, try not to waste it. Okay. Now let's talk a little bit about the uh, different rations and, and feed costs that come along with them. I've got about 12 different rations here I'd like to go, go through. We're going to start out some lower average daily gain, then we're going to switch to a little bit higher. This first one, these are for 700 pound steers. So if you're doing a budget, if you want to go from 6 to 800 pounds, an average would be 700. So that gives you an idea where things are at. If you started off with a simple grass hay, now this is kind of good grass hay, not crappy grass hay. This would be the stuff that's harvested in July, not September. You fed that along with 10 pounds of barley malt sprouts, you can end up with 2 pounds a day gain. Feed conversion's a 10 to 1, and uh, 
feed cost of 42 cents. Now, if we took the same hay, mixed it with a little bit of alfalfa hay and 10 pounds of wheat mids, we'd actually pick, we'd pick up our, our energy concentration in the ration, our gain would go up to 2.5, our feed conversions go down to 8 to 1, and the feed cost goes down too at 33 cents. We could just feed grass hay and wheat mids, but wheat mids are high in phosphorus, so we need to supply some extra li calcium. Limestone is a source of, uh, of calcium. So in this particular ration, 8 grass hay, 12 wheat mids, we're down to 2.5 pounds a day gain, 8 to 1 feed conversion, 33 cents. Just kind of the same as the ration be above. So 2.5 pounds a day, the cost of a feed to put on a gain, not total cost of gain, but just feed cost, is 33 cents. Last year I looked at these numbers and they were 10 to 15 cents higher than what they are this year. Our feed costs have gone down. Okay. Here's a, four, a, a combination of four. Grass hay, alfalfa hay, a little bit of corn green and wheat mids. Again, two and a half pounds a day gain. Feed efficiency at eight to one. Uh, and our feed costs are 33 cents. Broken record, alfalfa hay and corn silage. Given the price that I said earlier of around, what, $27 per ton? of what our corn silage price was. And our uh, alfalfa hay is going to be at $80 a ton. Alfalfa hay in the two. Okay, 2.2 .2 average day of the gain. Feed conversions of 17.7 as fed to one pound a gain. That's because silage is 70% water, 60% water. A feed cost is 33.34 cents per pound a gain. Not bad, another ration. Okay, let's pick up the average day of the gain a little bit. We're going to increase the amount of corn grain to 6 pounds, wheat mids to 6 pounds, but we've got to drop off the hay to only 8 pounds. Our gain goes up to 2.9, feed conversions of 7 to 1. Feed cost goes down to 30 cents. Slight changes in gain, especially with the corn price, can really reduce our cost per pound of gain, a feed. Okay, where am I at here? I think i got two more rat. No, i got six more rations here. Here's alfalfa hay. 2.6 pounds a day gain along with 7 pounds of corn. This is some not uh, not fully mature alfalfa hay, nor is it pre-bud alfalfa hay. Um, it's going to be uh, one-tenth bloom alfalfa type hay uh, along with 7 pounds of grain. Now if this hay has been, been dried out and stored, I don't see too much bloat potential. And if it's been, you know, still kind of moist and... and, and fairly palatable, you might end up with some broly issues, so you might have to adapt cattle to this particular ration, depending upon how you put it together. Uh, or add rumensin, which will help decrease the bloat issues. Uh, feed conversion, 7.7 .7 or 8 to 1. Feed cost is 33 cents again. You know, it's just amazing. Well, everything's around 33 cents per pound to gain because all our feeds are hooked together. And we're doing around a two and a half pound of gain. Well, here's one where you're doing seven pounds of alfalfa and 11 pounds of corn, but we need extra protein in the ration, so we're going to use a pound and a half of protein supplement. You get up to 3.4 pounds a day gain. Feed conversions are less than six to one. Cost of gain is 36 cents. Not out of line. If you want to use uh, even more corn to boost up the gain to 3.8, you're going to have to eat, Maintain the protein supplement at a pound and a half and alfalfa hay at 5.5 .5 pounds or decrease. Your feed conversion goes down to 3.3 to 1, and the cost now is again at 33 cents. So if the cattle can handle the gain, feeding the extra grain will put on more weight, and, and the cost of gain is still very competitive. Well, here's my last slide when it comes to rations. We've got grass hay at 15 pounds and 5 pounds of distillage grains. Gain is going to be 1.7 pounds a day gain, kind of like that heifer backgrounding ration. Feed to gain is 12 pounds to pound to gain. Um, cost to gain is 44 cents. When they don't put on much weight, it just costs a lot. That's, yeah. So now let's go to grass hay at 10 pounds, a little spike with corn grain at 4 pounds and 6 pounds of distillers, 2.7 pounds a day gain, 7.5 pounds, 7.5 feed conversion, 30 cent cost to gain. If we pick up the grain even more to 7 pounds and keep the distillers at 6 and grass hay at 7, we're doing 3.3 with a 2.63 cost to gain. So far, that cheap distillers grains, cheap corn, cheap grass hay, Fed at a pretty high rate gives a pretty good cost to gain, so things to think about and consider. Now let's talk about our rate of gain goals. 
You know, if you're looking to make grass cattle out of these cattle, and your goal is to go ahead and sell them into the grass market, or put them on your own pastures, you kind of want to have less than a two pound a day average daily gain, so when they go out to pasture, they gain weight. If they're fairly fleshy and go out to pasture, they just stall out and don't really gain too much. So you kind of have a high cost to gain during the backgrounding phase, but a low cost to gain during the pasture phase. And so the two kind of work out, or that's why people bid up well for those cattle, because they really do well out on pasture. If your cattle want to have a medium rate of gain, that two to three pounds a day gain, you can really grow them without adding condition. Uh, they go in the feed yards and explode quite well. Higher rates of gain, greater than three pounds a day, depending upon your cattle. You know, they can, they might get kind of fat and fleshy, and if they're too fat and fleshy, they kind of reduce the subsequent feedlot performance. We see it in some of our projects here, and that can happen. Although we do have cattle that show up in these projects that, that. They're just really good, fast greening cattle, and there's, you can't give them enough energy to ke keep them growing fast enough and get fat. They just really grow. They eventually do get fat, and they grade really well, but they can handle a full feed of grain their whole life and, and do quite well. So if you know the history of the cattle, how you, how you performance, manage them, it gives you an idea of how you can feed them. John talked a little bit about the calf web calculator. There's the website for it. Or just type Google and type in calf web, and you can do a break, use the break-even calculator. I always like it because it's been peer-reviewed, and when you crank out the numbers, that's kind of the way they're supposed to be. Okay. I did some cost comparisons, too, for budgets. For kind of a different reason, but... Um, we took five 70-pound calves, fed them up to 750 pounds, four different rations, one at 1.7, one at 2.2, one at 2.5, and one at 3.4. Different types of feeds. One's used grass hay and distillers, others alfalfa and corn silage, one grass hay and mids, and the other one grass hay, corn, and distillers. Three different types of rations. You know, to be perfect rations, they should have a trace mineral supplementation, some vitamins, um, maybe an onophore added with it. Maybe even a coccidiostat like chorid or decox if you got coccidiosis issues. Um, three, four different types of average daily gains for backgrounding calves. Now this is kind of a busy slide. It's got a lot of numbers on there, but I think it used the same numbers that John did for in weights. 570 calves in weights around 280, out weights 750 around 240. And then you've got your four different average daily gains. Now your ration cost per ton on that first ration is 75, on the corn silage ration is 39, on the ground hay and wheat mids is 82, grass hay and wheat mids is 82, and now you've got the corn distillers, it's 85. Your feed conversions differ because the average daily gains differ. Yardage at 35 cents, we had other expenses. I put in some price protection here at 20 pounds. You can see they all gained 180 pounds. The ones that only gained 1.7 pounds, we fed them for 100 days. The ones that we smoked at 3.4 pounds a day gain went out in less than two months. Well, you look down here at the break-even costs, and or the total cost to gain, and you can see where as they increase their gain, they decrease their break-even cost, and their total cost to gains per pound of gain goes down. And if you look at the profit, yeah, Tim, you're right, 50 bucks a head in some of those calves. Yeah, it came up with the same number. But I did this to show that as, cal as you pick up the average daily gain, your profit potential usually picks up too. Now, one other point that I like to show, I did this compared to last year's numbers and then this year's numbers. Last year when we did the budget, we expected to make uh, $29 on a group of calves with 1.8 average daily gain. Expected to make $63 on a 2.3 average daily gain, on a 2.873 and a 3.486. Now, because of the market run-up, we made like two, three, four hundred dollars a head. Just amazing. But at the time we did the budgets, this is where the models, where the numbers came out. And now you have the 214 numbers, 2014 numbers that I just shared with you. If you look at the difference between last year's projected budgets and this year's projected budgets and the scenarios they used, they're within 15, 20 bucks a head difference. So even though you say the calf price is really high, and the feed prices are really low. Last year, calves were low and feed prices are high. When we walked into the budgets, it's a margin business. There's about so much money penciled into this whole thing, and it's showing up year after year after year. So in summary, I'd just like to say uh, 2014 feed costs have really, really dropped. It's kind of fun to go out and price corn at $0.06 cents a pound for feeding. Our feed cost projections decreased 10 cents a pound compared to last year's projections. Um, I hope you caught my drift of this feed cost per gain 
um, the cost of gain continues to decrease as your rate of gain increases. So as you pick up the average daily gain, your costs per pound of gain tend to decrease. Ration options continue to be many. We can get, focus on lots of different weights of gain. There's a lot of different local feeds. So if you've got some damaged feeds you can take an uh, uh, option of, that's, that'll work for you. Uh, the feed prices follow the corn price. So I suspect, Tim, as soon as the prices of corn go up, uh, our feed prices are going to go up too. I had a conversation earlier today that talked about co-product prices and and his prices were quite a bit higher than what the what he was finding was higher than what the plants were offering. That's because whoever he was purveying it from had bought them at high prices and they hadn't gotten rid of their high inventory costs to get down to the low cost yet. So there's some of that going on. And like my last uh, slide commented, backgrounding continues to be a margin business and looking at the budgets this year, there's some margin to be made even with these really high priced calves. So with that, um, I'm done with uh, the comments I have to share. If you've got any questions, I'd be sure to happy to answer one or two. Um, if not, uh, we'll continue on to our next speaker.